Welcome. This week, uh, we will take a close look at different measures of gender inequality and how researchers use these indicators in their work on CEDAW. The most important of the measures are the Gender Development Index, the Gender Inequality Index, and the Siri Human Rights Dataset with scales for social rights of women, the economic rights of women, and the political rights of women. Notably, the Gender Inequality Index, the GII, has several subscales of considerable interest, education, political representation, workforce participation, for example. The Gender Development Index, the GDI, measures gender gaps in human development achievement using three basic dimensions of human development, health, knowledge, and living standards. The GDI is based on the Human Development Index, HDI. The GDI measures the gender gap between males and females. The GDI is actually calculated from the HDI from the Human Development Index. The GDI measures life expectancy, expected years of schooling, mean years of schooling, and gross national income per capita separately for males and females. The Gender Development Index then is a direct measure of the gender gap in that it shows the female GD, HDI, the Female Human Development Index measure, as a percentage of the male HDI. The United Nations GDI page shows the index for 167 countries. Countries are classified as very high human development, high human development, medium human development, and low human development. Nations are grouped into these four groups based on absolute deviation from gender parity in HDI values. This means that grouping takes equally into consideration gender gaps favoring males and gender gaps favoring females. The Gender Inequality Index, the GII, measures gender inequalities in three important aspects of human development. Reproductive health, measured by maternal mortality and adolescent birth rates. Empowerment, measured by the proportion of parliamentary seats occupied by females and the proportion of adult females and males aged 25 and older with at least some secondary education. Economic status, the third important aspect of human development, is measured by labor force market participation and labor force participation rates for male and female populations aged 15 years or older. The higher the Gender Inequality Index value, the GII, the greater the disparities between males and females, and the greater the loss of human development. The United Nations GII page provides data on the position of women on the index for 162 countries. It yields insights into gender gaps in major areas of human development. The component indicators highlight areas that are in need of critical policy intervention. The, the indices can stimulate thinking, proactive thinking, and public policy aimed at overcoming the specific disadvantages or discrepancies between men and women. The Siri Human Rights Dataset contains standards-based quantitative information 
on government respect for 15 internationally recognized human rights for 202 countries annually from 1981 to 2011. Uh, it is designed for use by scholars and students who want to test theories and consequences of human rights violations, as well as policymakers and analysts who want to estimate human rights on a wide variety of institutional changes and public policies, including uh, democratization, uh, economic development, military aid, uh, humanitarian intervention. The Siri index is also used in a number. There are three subscales, and those subscales the, uh, that are relevant to, uh, to CEDA and the rights of women, uh, the economic rights of women, the social rights of women, and the political rights of women. And those subscales are used in uh, a number of studies, including uh, a study by Wade Cole, and then also I, I have a short paper on that uses uh, the Siri indicators. The earlier paper or article with Stephanie Perez uh, presented at the Center for the Study of Religion and Society in my earlier paper and then this later paper from the Center for, for the Study of uh, Religion and Society and my forthcoming uh, paper in the, uh, 19, the, 19, the 2021 uh, Annual Review of the Sociology of Religion uh, shows higher levels of gender inequality on all of these indicators for uh, non -CD, uh, CEDA state parties. That is, CEDA OP state parties have lower levels of gender inequality on you know, almost all of these uh, indicators. Nation states that sign CEDA without reservations are more likely to become CEDA OP parties. Uh, so this corroborates the idea that being a, a CEDAW optional protocol state party signals a higher level of commitment to CEDAW. Two ideas weigh heavily in describing the relationship between commitment to CEDAW, CEDAW, gender inequality measures, and uh, CEDAW OP. Countries with lower levels of gender inequality have lower costs associated with being with higher levels of commitment. So it's a rational choice model. The, the, or, you know, what Weber and Max Weber would call a, a value rational choice, that uh, countries who are already uh, high in gender equality or low in gender inequality uh, have lower costs associated with signing on to CEDAW and the CEDAW OP and, and having very high levels of commitment to it. It just aligns with the values they have and the values that they have already legalized within the country. The cause of direction, however, runs in both ways. So countries that are already low and in gender inequality and have uh, a number of, in, you know, conform on a number of different indicators to commitment to CEDAW uh, become state parties, and then the CEDA and CEDA OP actually result in, in a wide variety of ways for a wide variety of reasons, result, most likely result in uh, a, a further reduction in gender inequality. The higher levels of gender inequality for both non CEDA OP parties is measured by country scores on the gender inequality index and in an earlier study on Siri measures of women's political and economic rights, increase the cost of implementing the convention for nation states with high scores on the index. Uh, these findings corroborate the relationship between endogenous cultural uh, structural support for gender equality and enhanced commitment to CEDAW-OP. So in the folder for this week, you're, you'll find uh, all three of these measures, uh, one of the one of the things you you may want to uh, consider is is looking up these looking up the values or the measures for the countries that you are using for your blog, but also the subscales. So this week that's our focus, and then next week we'll look at some more uh, indicators of uh, gender inequality or, or or cultural values within nation states.